This video is going to show you how to run a Man Whitney test in SPSS. A Man Whitney test can be viewed as a non parametric equivalent to an independent samples t test. So, the example that we're going to look at today um, will probably make more sense if you're from the UK than if you're from anywhere else. Um, what we're looking at is people's perceptions of how appetizing chips and gravy is. We've got two conditions in this experiment. We've got people from southern England and people from northern England. So there are two independent samples, people either from the south or they're from the north of England. Our dependent variable is appetizing and this is simply a measure in which we show individuals a picture of chips and gravy and we ask them how appetizing do they find the picture and they complete that on a ordinal Likert scale which is scored from 1 not at all to 5 extremely. So as you can see we've coded this as well, we coded this as ordinal data because it's an attitude scale, it's an individual's opinion so we've got to so we treat this as ordinal data. We've also got a relatively small sample. So we need to do a non-parametric test on this data. To run a man Whitley test, we need to analyze non-parametric tests and then again onto legacy dialogues. And we we've, we've got we want to look at this here. Two independent samples. This is because we've got two samples. We've got people from the south and people from the north of England. And this gives us our two independent samples test. You can see there's a few different ones here, but we're just going to be looking at the default, the Man Whitney U test today. And it's very similar actually to an independent samples t test dialog. We've got our group variable and we've got our test variable list. So our test variable is our dependent variable, which is appetizing, and our grouping variable is condition. Our conditions were coded as 0 for southern, 1 for normal. And as you can see, SPSS has now put that coding in there. That's all you've got to do. And you just simply click OK. It's a relatively straightforward output. Um, the first of all is the ranks. So um, as it's a non-parametric test, um, a man with your test ranks the data, doesn't deal with the raw data, it changes them to ranks and then an analyzes the ranks instead. So in this table, what we can see is we've got two conditions, Southern England and Northern England, and the total number of participants, 16 in each condition, which makes 32 in total. We've got the mean ranks and then the sum of the ranks. If you divide the sum of ranks by the, the number of participants in that condition, you'll get the mean rank as well, obviously. So what can we tell from this table? Well, we can tell that the mean ranks or the sum of ranks, whichever one you want to look at, is greater those in Northern England and Southern England. So this is indicative of generally people from North of England are finding that picture more appetizing than people from Southern England. However, of course, that's merely very descriptive. So what we need to do is look at this table. And you can see it gives you quite a few different statistics. Fortunately, SPSS in this case is very clear on the statistic that you want. It clearly says Man Whitney U. That's your man Whitney U statistic, which you'll be reporting as your critical value. There's some other statistics here. We can ignore this for now, and we can ignore this, but I'm going to show you how you would use that one later on. So as you can see, we've got two different p-values been computed. This stands for asymptotic, and that's just your exact significance. Typically, we use the exact significance. However, sometimes when you, particularly when you have very large samples, you there is a tendency, and um, people tend to be more likely to report the asymptotic p-value. Um, it can be slightly more powerful method of deriving the p-value. But in this case, what we're going to be looking at is our exact p-value here. As you can see, we've got a statistically significant difference, and this seems to be caused by people in the north of England finding the chip picture of chips and gravy more appetizing than people from southern England. And we could just write this up accordingly to state that a man with EU test indicated that chips or gravy were perceived as significantly more appetizing by people from the north of England compared to those from the south of England. And we'd give our man with EU statistic and the p value. Of course, 
that's only a limited amount of information. We'd also probably, you'd, you'd want to give a median and range of descriptive statistics for these, for our data here. In addition, we should also always give an effect size. The effect size calculation for this is, is very straightforward, and this is where we use our Z statistic. So the effect size we gave is an R, and it's simply the Z statistic divided by the square root of N, which is our total sample size. So as you can see, we've got a series of steps that we can follow through here, and this will give us our R value of 0.42. And we'd add this to the end of our sentence. After we give the p-value, we can report our effect size. And then regarding our effect size, we can make a conclusion as to what type of effect we see. We can use this table as a way of ascertaining whether we've got a small, medium, and large effect. And in this example, we could say we've got a medium to large effect of location on how appetizing people find chips with gravy in England.